night in friendship and in trust. Also, may your mind remain alert and your eyes clear that you may gather the wisdom and the right choices on this night. Now that he's all pure and stuff, Knights, <laughs> let's take him on to his vigil. Here's the driven slide. Yes. <laughs> this hereby closes the court of their majesties. The populace are invited to attend all the Lord's service during this vigil, which will last until sunrise. The knighting ceremony will be held on the list field at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning.
Since ancient times, it has been recognized that there are certain warriors who are much deserving of high honor, not only by their skill of arms, but by their noble behavior, which become and define the meaning of chivalry. For kingdom is supported by these three things, service, art, and chivalry. Our kingdom, chivalry strides forth as an example to all in prowess, grace, service, and dedication. For to be amongst these, this assembly, a candidate must serve the realm, its people, and traditions, as well as support the arts and sciences. Be it proven to have prowess on the field of battle and war and skill with all weapons, forms, and tournament, thus was created the order of knighthood of our society. To recognize those who possess all the other skills, virtues, and attributes appropriate to the members of a peerage shall also have distinguished themselves by their prowess of arms and chivalric demeanor. The ancient attached so much importance to the order of the knighthood that they held that neither emperor nor king until they had created a knight. Thus, a true and just reasons, no one to be made a knight by the hand of him who is not one, thus this order is formed like unto the knightly orders of old, with accolades passing in unbroken descent from night to night. And the symbols of this order are the white belt, the unadorned chain, and spurs. For the white belt betokens the honor with which the knight girds himself, and the chain, the duty that he accepts, and the spurs, the obligation of defending the realm. My knights, is your circle complete? It is not. It is not. It is not. It is not your majesty. You would bring forth the candidate. The royal majesties call forth honorable lord Seamus MacDougall. They will speak for this man. I will speak for Seamus. I was his knight. For 13 years. Before my belt. For about half that time, I counted you as my equal. It, it, it does me. I don't have the words to express the joy that I feel to know that you will be my peer. Is there a member of the Order of the Laurel who will speak for this man? I will. Mistress Hirokin. I have known Seamus many a year. 
the art of diversity and balance he shall bring to the circle. While he takes one art and other arts and he shares them with our great populace, it is in this that I welcome you as an equal and a peer. Is there a member of the Order of the Pelican who will speak for this man? Beloved Majesties, it would be my great pleasure and honor to speak for this man. This man. This is James McDougall. He served this kingdom with his whole heart, his hand, his head, the sweat off his back, and his spear. He has defended you jealously. He has defended this kingdom jealously. I would put none before him. He has long, long been my peer. <clears throat> and I am overjoyed to see all those gathered here to witness this day. See this crowd, witness this. These people have come to share in this joy. Your journey has been theirs as they've watched you. Your lady wife, the love with which she gazes upon you is a testimony to how you serve her. That young man that you raised up in the warrior's way, he makes us all better. You continue to serve with love, with passion, and with loyalty. None can ask anymore. Bless you and welcome my peer. Is there a member of the Order of Defense that will speak for this man? I will. Master Matthias. I had the honor of of actually being a cadet to Seamus. And it was actually a very surprising thing that he asked me, and, and a great honor. And he told me he didn't think that I had a lot to learn, but the guidance that he gave me, and the, the instructions on how to become a better person, truly made me what I am here today. And it's this quality that I, I find most exemplary in you. And why I'm glad to see that you are among us here today. Thank you. Seamus, we're pleased with your progress. You've come a long way. In front of me, behind me, beside me, I've enjoyed my time as your friend and hope to continue. But you've heard the words from last night. You've heard the words from today. Still, your wish to be a peer of my realm. Then let's make it so. Is there a sword for this man? The ancients adorned that noble knight should always wear the sword in order that he may always be reminded of the virtues which they should possess. The hilt of the sword signifies prudence, for as long as he holds it, he has the power to raise or lower it, strike it, strike with it, or abandon it. As fortitude renders you steadfast in the middle of danger, so does all the fortitude of the sword lie in its pommel, for it is attached to the hilt, the guard, and the blade. Thus the guard, which is placed between the handle and the blade, and of the sword resembles moderation between things which are excessive and those which are, are less than they should be, and justice, which includes what is right in equally, e equality, resembles the blade of the sword, which is straight, sharp, and cuts the same with both edges. And that by means of it, and with no other weapon, should, that, should they retrieve the honor of the knighthood. Are there spurs for this man? <coughs> the spurs are symbols of the knight, vowed to guard and honor the knightly order, to keep faith, to speak the truth, and to live with honor and not for reward. May they never be hacked off in shame or de degradation, for only 
the knight ride openly into battle in the name of the king. And as the knight puts on his spurs and on his right and left foot to make with his horse and keep the direct course, it is like a manner in which he should perform his deeds justly so that he may not swerve to either direction and re remember always your obligation to protect and defend those who are weaker than yourself and to fight for your crown, kingdom, with honor. <coughs> is there a belt for this man? <coughs> Seamus, this white belt is an outward sign of your purity. Be it never stained, it is reserved for your order and is easily a recognizable accolade for all the people to behold. Your actions thus must always be pure of heart. Remember always that the ladies of this <coughs> kingdom spoke on your behalf and on your chivalry. Always conduct yourself in a manner that would bring honor to them, as well as your own lady, both on and off the field. Is there a pole axe for this man? I had it. The pole axe is given to the knight to signify strength of courage. For just as the pole axe is strong against all arms and strikes at all angles, so the force of the courage defends a knight from all vices and upholds the virtues and good customs by which a knight protects chivalry and ensure that it is received and esteemed due to it. Is there a shield for this man? The shield is given to the knight to represent the duty of a knight. For just as the knight puts his shield between himself and his enemy, so the knight is the intimate intermediary between the prince and the people. And just as the stroke falls upon the shield and saves the knight, in the same way the knight ought to array himself to present his body before his lord when that lord is in peril, hurt or captured. Is there a banner for this man? There is. The banner represents the motivation of the knight must bring to his soldiers and that he might be a great, greatly known for all his acts, honorable and otherwise. Is there a chain for this man? There is. Trimaris, 
hereafter bearing this patent of arms with all rights, privileges appertaining. This done by our hand and seal upon the 14th day of November, Anno Societatis 50, at Martin Mass Moot. Arden, King, Lisa, Queen. Thank <laughs> you. 
pretend like I'm watching. Be asleep. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I expected you to make me cry. I, it I, was not you. It was Seti. I tried. I tried. I almost did. I know. Especially so sweet. She's so sweet. Right?